everybody and welcome back to my channel. My name is Kitty Mary and today I am continuing the I'm going to go to a normal conventional non-zero waste supermarket, see what I can find without packaging or specifically without plastic and then I'm going to cook a meal from the things that I find at that supermarket. It's a working title. Anyway, I've done a couple of these videos before. The previous one is about a month old and before that a couple of years went by from the last post. I'm trying to keep it up and not let you guys sit there and wait for a year and a half for the next entry in the series. And I really like this series actually. I think it's really cool. It's a fun thing to try if you're new to zero waste or if you think, well, hey, I can't even attempt zero waste because I don't have a bulk store nearby. We can all try and go down to your local supermarket, see what is available to you, find out what options you have and then build from there. It's fine. It doesn't have to be perfect. You're trying. It's amazing and it's cool. That's what I want to show with this video. So without further ado, today we're going to Furtex. I'm located in Denmark, so primarily the stores are going to be Danish. There are some international ones. I've already done Aldi, Lidl, etc. Um, but today is a Danish chain. It's called Furtex. Let's go. So actually I shop quite routinely in this store, so I know what they have and you guys, my hopes aren't up. Already when we get to the produce section, it's looking pretty grim. We have some fruit that are package free, but for vegetables, almost everything here is wrapped in plastic. So I think I need to be extra creative today. I'm spotting some cauliflower here, so we're definitely going to use that as a big element in today's dish. You can almost always find red bell pepper in bulk in Danish supermarkets, so you know this is coming too. And the zucchini, another thing that's pretty easy to find. I was honestly a little bit shocked to see that all of their tomatoes were packaged, not a single loose option. This is usually pretty easy to find, but uh, it doesn't seem to be here. Instead, I'm opting for this sauce made from rescued tomatoes. You're coming home with me. Leafy greens without plastic. Forget it, honey. Nowhere was it to be found. Nowhere is it ever to be found in Danish supermarkets. I did, however, find both garlic and onions without packaging. And that was pretty exciting. You don't see that in every store. So I was really happy and I appreciated that at least. I brought my own totes, obviously, of course. Also found bulk potatoes. I don't need those today, but I appreciate that they're there. Moving into dried goods, I found a box of pasta and it requires the shake test. Nope, no plastic inside. There is a little vegan shelf with some cool things. I haven't seen this tikka masala, but I have had this Bernays more times than I can count. However, no plastic free rice in sight, so we're moving on. Vegan butter, minimal packaging. I'm not opposed to tins. They have a high recycling rate in Denmark and makes cooking with beans and lentils really easy and convenient. For dried herbs and spices, there are no bulk options here and there rarely are in Danish supermarkets, but I definitely like some of these containers. They're easy to reuse. These small round ones I actually use for bulk shopping. Speaking of, we have bulk sweets. I brought a bag, so we are getting some. They have clear markings for what's vegan as well, which is pretty neat. And I think that was it. We got a few things and I already have a specific dish in mind that I want to make. Okay, we have some things. Actually, we have a lot of things. Oh, I, mm, I don't know. It was a pretty big store. Furtex is one of the bigger supermarkets and compared to its size, the selection was pretty limited, let me tell you now. So there are going to be some similar things from last time because usually you can find the same things unpackaged in most supermarkets in Denmark. Sometimes they're variables, for the most part there isn't, in my experience. <laughs> I also brought more small totes this time than I did the last time because I actually ended up needing more than I brought last time. This time I didn't use all of them, so you know, there is that. First of all, we have pick and mix. That's not pick and mix. This is pick and mix. It's available in most Danish supermarkets and I simply just bring my own bag. This is just to have like a little snack. This is not going to be the main dish we're making. Then, and this was exciting to me, I got onions. We also have garlic. This is also exciting to me. Usually they come in like these plastic packaging. Then we have pepper. This is pretty standard to find package free in Danish supermarkets. Then I got a little tin of lentils, simply just to add some protein to the dish that I will tell you 
about it in a second. Then I have a zucchini slash squash. Then we got just a tiny tin of tomato paste. And now, okay, so I buy this basically every single time I make this video, this style of video, but that's because it's really easily available and it's lasagna sheets. Oh, I use them often for non-lasagna related recipes, but I simply just break them and use them as the pasta because they come without plastic, super, super convenient. But I'm thinking that today we're actually going to make lasagna. This is not completely plastic free, but this is the closest you can get to a vegan butter without any packaging. Then I got two jars of tomato sauce and this is made with leftover slash discarded tomatoes, which I really, really like. So I wanted to support that concept as well. Also, you couldn't find a single tomato in Futix without plastic. The reason why I wanted to do lasagna was because I saw the cauliflower and I have done tons of different things with cauliflower. I've made, you know, like vegan buffalo wings, etc. things with cauliflower stir fries, put them into filling for gyoza, etc. And I think that today I want to make this into a vegan cheese cream, bechamel style, and then use that in lasagna. That's pretty exciting. Haven't done that before, but I have a feeling that it's going to be super easy. Famous last words. I mentioned this last time I made this video as well, but I'm not only exclusively going to use the ingredients that I bought today. I'm also going to use the spices, herbs, oils, etc. that I already have in my kitchen because I want the dish to be as delicious as possible. Otherwise, it would be pretty wasteful to purposefully make something less amazing. That doesn't make any sense. Um, but this is going to be like the base. Okay. Also, just a quick note, but there were plenty of other things. They had tons of things in tins and jars and bottles, easily recyclable packaging that I could also have used. But now I started to think I wanted to do the lasagna. So there were tons of things that didn't make sense for me to buy. So I sort of narrowed my scope down a little bit onto the things that I needed. I could have gotten way more stuff. Not necessarily a lot more vegetables and greens and fruit, Maybe a little bit, but I don't need a cantaloupe right now. Also tried to keep it minimal with the exotic slash imported fruit and veg that I didn't need, so. So start by taking the leaves off your cauliflower. However, don't throw them away. We are not using them in this dish, but they can be used in a variety of other dishes and they're really tasty when prepared correctly. Now chop your cauliflower into smaller bits and place them in a pot with some salted water. Get all of those crumbles as well. We're going to bring it to a boil and then let it simmer for 20 to 30 minutes or until the cauliflower is completely soft. Meanwhile, starting on the sauce, first of all, we're chopping onions and of course we are also saving those onion peels. Also chop that whole red bell pepper as well. I like to cut both into really small pieces, but do whatever you prefer. We're going to start frying the red pepper and the onion in some olive oil and when that's really nicely combined and browned, we're going to add the zucchini and the garlic. I don't know if you could tell, this is not going to be like a traditional lasagna whatsoever, but you know, with whatever ingredients I just had on hand. It's gonna be good though. actually started to chop them but then I decided that I wanted them super super small the pieces as well so I ended up running them through the food processor instead I added both jars of sauce as well as the same amount of water to get the right consistency. Then I added my tin of lentils and let it simmer for as long as possible. While the sauce is simmering on low heat, let's make the cauliflower bechamel, simply just by blending the soft boiled cauliflower until completely smooth. And to make it even more smooth, I pressed the sauce slash puree question mark through a fine sieve so there were no lumps left at all. At this point, I also added about 75 grams of vegan butter, about two to five tablespoons of oat milk, and tasted it with salt and pepper. Look how beautiful it is. Appreciation. 
The most important part is the fresh ground nutmeg, a good generous drizzle and mix that in. And with that, we are ready to assemble the lasagna. I start with a layer of veggie sauce, then pasta, then sauce again, bechamel on top and then keep doing that over and over until you have reached the top of your tray. Now bake in a preheated oven at 180 degrees Celsius for about 20 to 25 minutes. Now the lasagna is in the oven and whilst it's cooking, I think it's going to cook for about 20-25 minutes, we're going to clean the kitchen because let me just... By the way, saving all the scraps from this recipe, I'm going to make veggie broth from it. I have a recipe for that, so I'll leave that down below. I couldn't fit, you know, the actual cauliflower leaves in here, but I'm also not going to use them for broth, but I'm going to puree them and use them in filling for dumplings. I also have a video on how to do that. We also have some leftovers, so this I'll just freeze and use sort of a quick pasta sauce I can use for whatever. And then we have a tiny bit of the cauliflower sauce. I ended up using an entire head of cauliflower for this dish. So if you have issues with getting people you cook for to eat more vegetables, perhaps that sauce is a good idea. Um, I'll leave a recipe for this lasagna. I already have a lasagna recipe on my blog, but I'll leave one for this specific one as well, because it's a lot more packed with vegetables than the other one. And this is just cauliflower. It's so good. <laughs> it doesn't taste like cauliflower at all at this point. Like, mm. and it's completely smooth as well. <laughs> I'm just really happy, but the lasagna is out and warm. Okay, one sec. Now this is what we ended up with. There are lots of lasagna sheets in my lasagna, but that's because I do love it when it's really heavy on the pasta. If you like it heavier on the sauce or the Cauliflower, you can do that as well, but I like my ratio to be pasta dominant. She does look pretty good though. Okay, knife. Oh, it's so smooth. Perfect. Did you know, by the way, lasagna is one of my favorite leftover foods because it just tastes so good after a night in the fridge. Perfect. <laughs> Let us see. Oh. Yeah, one second, final touch. Final, final touch. I have so little of this cream left, so I might as well use it on top here. Okay, this is gorgeous. I am so excited to eat this. I don't know, I love this amount of pasta in it. That or nothing, okay. I know that's my reaction to a lot of food, but I'm I'm so excited that this is good. And that this that good, I did not expect that. The cauliflower sauce, absolutely next level. Oh, warm. Ha, 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 ha. Mm. And just got home and he's tasting the lasagna as well. It has a secret, the sauce. It's not like I normally make it. What is it? Do you want to know? Yes. It is 98, 99% cauliflower. What? Yeah. Oh my God, it's so good. Yeah, it's so good. It's really delicious. It's basically only cauliflower, nutmeg, salt, pepper, and a little bit of vegan butter. Oh my God. That's it. It's really good. It's so nice. Anyway, that was it for this video. Let me know if you want me to do more supermarket cooking zero waste low waste videos i would love to do that um but let me know if you want to see them and please give this video some love consider subscribing that would make my day and other than that just have a really amazing day thank you so much for watching and i'll see you guys next time i'm going to take this with me now and then i'm gonna go okay bye Thank you so much for watching this video and also a special thank you to my Patreon supporters. You guys help me create green zero waste contents and I love you guys. You can find the links to my social media accounts down below and the link to my Patreon on this screen. Bye!